Toronto in the 1920s was home to over 500,000 people. One of the more prominent houses in the city was Spadina, home of the Austin family from 1866 until 1982. Today it is a museum restored to what the house would have looked like in the 1920s when the second and third generation of Austins lived here. In 1829, James Austin came to Upper Canada, now Ontario, as part of a large wave of emigrants from the north of Ireland, seeking new land and opportunities. 16-year-old James was apprenticed to work in the shop of printer and radical politician William Lyon Mackenzie, while his parents, brothers and sister settled on a farm near what is now Oakville. When his boss, Mackenzie, led a rebellion against the government in 1837, James Austin moved to the United States not to return to Toronto until acquiring money and a business partner in 1843. They started a large grocery business. One year later, he married Susan Bright, whose family came here as loyalists following the American Revolution. Through his involvement in real estate, railways and insurance companies, and by presiding over the Consumers Gas Company, James Austin became a leading member of the city's business community. He was founder of both the Canadian Bank of Commerce and the Dominion Bank, at which he served as longtime president. James purchased the Spadina property from a prominent family, the Baldwins, in 1866, and began constructing a new house on the earlier foundations. The name Spadina is derived from Spadina, an Ojibwe word meaning hill or sudden rise of land. At this time, Spadina was surrounded by farm fields and bordered by country estates along the top of the Davenport Escarpment, all a fair distance from the edge of the city. By the time the second generation, Albert and his wife Mary moved into the house with their five children in 1898, the city had breached the bottom of the hill, and Albert soon replaced the fields next door with a golf course. Albert and Mary Austin added to the house several times, and by 1913, Spadina was architecturally complete as you see it today, transformed into a city mansion. Albert and Mary were among Toronto's social, cultural, and financial elite. The years leading up to the 1920s were difficult ones for the Austins. Albert and Mary's second son, Albert Edison, died of tuberculosis in 1913. The First World War took a toll on their eldest son, Percy, who served as a gunner, and their youngest, Margaret, who spent time in a military hospital in England as a Red Cross nursing assistant. Percy was diagnosed with shell shock, now better known as post-traumatic stress disorder, and on medical advice, the family arranged for a quieter home for him in Barrie. In the city of Toronto, the celebrations that marked the war's end soon gave way to widespread disillusionment over the human toll and the lack of employment for returning soldiers. But by the early 1920s, both the city and the Austins were rejuvenating, and nearly the entire world was infused with a newfound sense of optimism. Known today as the Roaring Twenties, this decade of rampant economic growth is best known for jazz, baseball, and flappers. Teenage girls who smoked, drank, drove, and bobbed their hair. In North America, prohibition was an attempt to stop alcohol sales, while speakeasies and gangsters like Al Capone were determined to keep it flowing. Europe was rebuilding itself, although Germany was struggling with severe economic problems. The 20s saw the rise of communism in Russia and fascism in Italy. A new invention, radio, was becoming popular, and the first talkies were in the cinema. Modern advertising was born, and in Canada, a young band of artists known as the Group of Seven were painting the Canadian landscape. For the first time, more people were living in cities than in the country. In Toronto, the 1920s were not quite as roaring as cities like New York and Montreal. Immigration during this period was encouraged, but also feared. Toronto was still predominantly British Protestant and known as the City of Churches and Toronto the Good. 
It was a time of tremendous growth in the city, and big public works projects improved street lighting, snow removal, and garbage collection. The Toronto Transportation Commission was established, making it easier for the working class to get to baseball games, boxing matches, horse races, the movies, the Toronto Islands, or Sunnyside Park. Toronto's economic boom enabled many of the city's business elite to become considerably richer, and Albert Austin was no exception. Albert's influence was at its height during this period. He served as president of both Consumers Gas and the Dominion Bank. Spadina in the 20s had a chauffeur, a cook, a maid, and two garden staff. Mary was on the executive of the Women's Arts Association of Canada, the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, and the Women's Musical Club. Since membership in exclusive clubs was essential to the ongoing success of businessmen during this period, Albert was an active member of clubs such as the York, the National, and the Empire Clubs. He also helped found the Lambton Golf and Country Club. Albert's world included important people like Prime Ministers William Lyon Mackenzie King and Arthur Mahon. At home in Spadina, Mary hosted lavish dinners and parties such as the 400-guest Women's Arts Association fundraiser she held in 1928. Mary's parties included specialty imported foods, extra maids, live orchestral music, and, when it was legal again to do so, alcoholic beverages. The Austin's grocery bill often totaled hundreds of dollars per month, at a time when a good wage for a family of four in Toronto was about $120 per month. Her granddaughters, Patricia and Esme, who were teenagers during the 20s, often attended Spadina parties. They also enjoyed badminton, dances, teas, and the movies. Patricia and Esme were both interested in interior design and fashion trends, and kept scrapbooks of magazine cutouts. Women's clothing was becoming more comfortable. Corsets were out of style. Swimwear was more fitted, and skirts got shorter. Businesses targeted women as major consumers, but while many women were enjoying these changes, there was a general belief that young people had a little too much freedom and were spending too much money. Organizations such as the YWCA worked to keep young ladies in check. As the city grew around them, Albert attempted to maintain a degree of privacy around Spadina, most notably by protesting against the conversion of nearby Casa Loma into a luxury hotel. He felt it would encourage people who had no ties to the neighborhood to become tenants. The Austins themselves often vacationed at luxury hotels north of Toronto, in Algonquin Park and Muskoka. The 1920s saw the family taking fewer trips to Europe than before the First World War. Instead, in the winter, they often escaped to California or the hot springs in Virginia. Despite their luxurious lifestyle, the Austins had an advanced sense of social responsibility. They supported causes such as the Toronto General Hospital, YMCA, and Salvation Fund, among others. Albert was continuously asked to support other charities, to which he personally responded, even if the request was declined. By the end of the 1920s, it became apparent that their charitable giving was going to be even more important in the next decade. When the stock market crashed in October 1929, Albert, as president of the Dominion Bank, presented outward confidence in the bank and economy. In 1929, he purchased his largest cars yet, McLaughlin Buick limousines, one for him and one for Mary, each with their doors monogrammed. Everyone could see that the bank's president felt that good times were ahead. While the crash in its aftermath had a devastating effect on Toronto, such as unemployment as high as 30%, the Austins were relatively unaffected. By continuing to spend about the same amount per year throughout the Depression as they had in the previous decade, they supported many local businesses. It was time to prepare for the next generation. Patricia and Esme had elaborate debut parties at Spadina, hosted by Mary. Esme was featured in a debutante magazine where she listed moonlight sailing among her favorite activities. Though the family lived at Spadina for another 46 years, Spadina today reflects the 1920s, an age of optimism, growth, and a time when the Austins were at the height of their business, social and cultural influence in Toronto.